30 years ago today, Anita Hill testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee about being sexually harassed by then Supreme Court Justice nominee Clarence Thomas 30 years ago today. I remember this vividly. I was, gosh, I was, I was 14, I believe, but it was televised everywhere. It was, especially in the barbershops. So I want to play this clip, and I want to remind people as you're listening that Anita Hill was subpoenaed. She didn't want to testify. She was forced to testify. She had no choice. And there were other women who accused him, but Senator Joe Biden at the time, for some reason, did not call those other women. So it's framed like it was angry, angry black woman, Anita, Anita Hill, who was coming after this black man, who was also named the anti Thurgood Marshall. He was replacing Justice Thurgood Marshall. But I want you to hear a montage of the kind of questions that Anita Hill was, was asked at the time and her response 30 years ago today. Listen, a scorned woman. That, that, that took me for a loop. A scorned woman or was she on some kind of The civil rights, rights, Abisha. The, civil rights? the person who oh. said scorned woman, that was former Alabama Senator Hal Heflin. I'm gonna let you take this, Amisha. 30 years ago. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say I, I honestly know the history of of of, um, of the the process in and of itself. I mean, 30 years ago, I was a toddler. But when I think about everything that happened to Anita Hill, how she got a horrible treatment from both Democrats and Republicans, there were no winners here. How this was long before the Me Too movement, and even the Me Too movement is whitewashed as hell. So black women still aren't getting a fair shake in that today. But this is a woman who was not believed. This is a woman who was judged relentlessly as someone who was trying to tank a nomination, as someone who was trying to make a name for herself, sell a book, become uh, notorious to a certain extent. And all of those things were incorrect. Um, it's sad because not only did she not want to testify or never really want any of this to come to light anyway, because she was afraid of reprisals, which many women are. And that's why we have so many sexual harassment allegations and, um, and claims that go unheard because the, there's always in the majority of these cases, a power dynamic where the woman, um, it feels as though she is powerless in many cases because the guy is in an elevated position. And I think that there has to be an understanding that she didn't really have any place else to turn. So she gets up there. She tells her story. She tells what happened. And to the point that you made earlier, Clay, she was by far not the only woman. But if you see someone basically getting drugged, the odds of you stepping up and going through that exact same thing, especially watching a Black woman take an ale like that against a, a Black man who, um, in, in many cases, he had the lions on both sides protecting him. Democrats, because they, you know, for political football, they didn't want to go down as tanking this nomination. But then you also had Republicans who they saw him as the standard bearer. Um, they were his third good marshal, even though he was not their good marshal. And we saw this time and time again. And I think that to this day, she has not received the the commendation that she deserves, not only for going through that amount of hill, but also speaking out about it because her career did not, um, it, it, it didn't go to where I think she, the trajectory would have had she stayed silent. This is someone who is a great academic. This is someone who has written several, several books, women's empowerment books, um, history books and things like that. This is a woman who has made her claim when it comes to tenure and professorship, but that wasn't her original track. So I think that she did lose. She took an L in many ways by standing up, by being vocal, and even getting attacked and getting um, getting a, a lot of violent threats. Her family got attacked. We have to remember the era in which this came in. We still know that there are so many women who are afraid to step forward and have these conversations to this day. But 30 years ago, it was unheard of. And men just honestly did not care. From the clip that you played and from several others that I've seen, some of the questions that she got were just so ridiculous. They were so attack worthy. They were so negative. Um, they weren't trying to get to any real responses or any real answers or even dig to the bottom of this. They were trying to shake her up. They were trying to frighten her. They were trying to paint her image in a negative light. They were trying to basically destroy her. 
And kudos to Anita Hill for being as strong as she was. We also have to remember 30 years ago, she was quite a young woman and being faced with all of this and having a massive media firestorm and your story becomes world news. It really was a different space. We talk about, you know, Monica Lewinsky and the the um, the new series and everything around that. Anita Hill doesn't get her just due when it comes to how she basically was beaten up on by both sides of the aisle and became an international laughing stock, for lack of a better term, when a lot of those questions and a lot of the cartoon images and things came out from that as well. Yeah. That was a very tough time for her. Uh, I want to say the other woman was her name was Angela Wright. And Senate Democrats decided not to call her to testify. I will never, ever understand that, the other accuser. And for folks who may not be clear, I'm sorry I didn't say it in the beginning, but Anita Hill worked as an attorney under Thomas at the Equal, Oper Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. The other thing that I will never forget, and this is insider conversation, we're all family here, but I remember being at the barbershop watching this because it went on for days and there were men in the barbershop saying look at that black woman doing this to that black man now i'm i'm 14 i don't really get it but in retrospect really thurgood marshall bush is appointing him Y'all thinking this black woman is doing this black man? Uh, maybe granted they didn't have an idea of what Clarence Thomas's history was, even at the EEOC. You know, but they knew I, who I, nominated him. <laughs> they knew who nominated him. Uh, but I, I will never forget that. And even as a kid, I was like, "Wow!" And I want to also add this. And I I had the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Anita Hill before, and I think there was some colorism there as well. I think that there was colorism, her being a dark skinned black woman and on that they're testifying. Would they have took it differently if she were a different shade? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, but there was this idea. I think Dr. Anita Hill told me this, that Clarence Thomas said something like, oh, he wouldn't even be attracted to someone like her. So there's a lot there. Yeah, there's a lot there. And. That was actually a very Trumpian thing for him to say, Clarence Thomas. Trump would say that later. And this man is on the Supreme Court. He is on and the Supreme Court. And that doesn't, and that doesn't, to rewind to that, to that comment, just because someone says that they are not even attracted to someone who looks like or has the personage right. of somebody they sexually harassed or abused means nothing because it is not for sexual desire. It is a power play. Power. And they think it is the Power. same way that, you know, rapists and other sexual abusers respond. It is not about the attractiveness or the perceived attractiveness of the person that they are trying to attack or the person they are preying on. So I think that, you know, that that comment in and of itself is problematic in so many ways. But ain't that ain't that misogyny something, Amisha? I mean, in some ways, I'm kind of surprised that we had a, a black man president before a white woman. And then when you add a black woman, my God, it, it's just, uh, ain't it something? The way, I mean, are you a scorn woman? Are you militant for civil rights? I mean, wow. It, it's, it, and then even the way you see, the way that Christine Blasey Ford was treated. Uh, and then of course, the legendary, the legendary moment of Clarence Thomas, the iconic moment, he called it a high-tech lynching. And when he said high-tech lynching, for folks who are out there, who, out there who, who may not know, when he said that, all those white men in that Judiciary Committee, they said, okay, we're going to appoint him. He called it a high-tech lynching. That's the stunt that, cons that conservatives, Black conservatives fall on. I'm being lynched. Not Never even know. Black people. I, I mean, was, was Bill Cosby a... a I don't know. He was kind of conservative, but he said he was being lynched. R. Kelly said he was being lynched. I'm not saying that Clarence Thomas is an R. Kelly. I'm just saying that sometimes the narrative they fall on, but he said a high, first of all, there ain't no high tech lynching. Please <laughs> spare me. There ain't no such thing. Second of all, you ain't Emmett Till. All right. You, 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 uh. It's just something. So I, I wanted to make sure 30 years later that we honor Dr. Anita Hill. She was a trailblazer. She was vilified death threats. 
Kerry Washington did a, a great movie called Confirmation. Uh, didn't get the kind of love it deserved, but she did a great job. And she's been a champion for civil rights. She's done some amazing work. But you're right, she was vilified. And again, she was subpoenaed. She was forced to be there. She didn't want to be there. She was smart enough to know what would happen to her. Smart enough to know. Now, the great justice would be, they ain't going to do this. You know, President Biden has promised a Black woman on the Supreme Court. She, she has the qualifications. The great justice would be to have Anita Hill be his, his appointee. That would be, the, I, they could fight all they want, the Republican side. That would be the moment. I'd forgive everything. I would say, okay, okay, that would be it. Of course, they would never. They ain't that gangster, though. But if Biden was gangster, he'd say, Dr. Anita Hill is who I'm appointing to the Supreme Court, if he gets a chance to, because, you know, Republicans know how to take away a Supreme Court nominee, Supreme Court appointee, Whitley. Democrat. <laughs> they figure that out. They figure it out. Even if it's two years before, like Merrick Garland, they still figure it out. 